Hello, hello, welcome to this YouTube video, a new series called Rants with Stockton. No, that's not what it is. Today, what we're going to be talking about is cookies and kind of nipping in the bud a lot of misconceptions around what is happening with cookies and are they completely going away? No, anyone that tells you that cookies are going away, turn the other way and don't listen to them anymore because they don't know what they're talking about. Now, are cookies becoming less effective as a tracking mechanism? Yes, so we will dive into all of those bits and bobs, as JJ would say, to discuss some things around cookies. So let's dive in, but before we do that, let's head on over to our website. Here we go, we are on a whiteboard. Okay, this is the screen we need. So head on over to the website. What we're gonna be looking at is mostly this page, and you'll see on this page, actually, there are two things. So if you go tools we love, and then down here, there are two really cool pieces here where we have a mixed analytics GA4 dashboard that is filled to the brim of bits and bobs that you can use to have a GA4 report that won't break. And it'll actually work and your clients will love it. Your team members will love it. Your stakeholders will love it. It's really great. And then also check this out. We got a conversion tracking mini course also with GTM pre-built templates for each one of these platforms. So you can go and check each one of those out. Okay, so let's jump in though and let's start talking a little bit about cookies. So specifically, there's the cookie apocalypse, the cookie apocalypse that is, you know, everyone is saying is going on and that it's the end of the world for tracking and all these sorts of things. And it's simply not the case. Now things are less effective. Yes, that is true. There are limitations in play that affect things. But let's first of all just understand a little bit like what is a cookie, where do we see them, that sort of thing. So cookies are just pieces of information. JavaScript can set cookies. So when you place a pixel from, for example, here, let's go to this screen here, uh, from, for example, Facebook, and you put Facebook's code on your website, what you're doing is you're loading a bunch of JavaScript and Facebook has programmed into that JavaScript to set and read cookies. So the the way Facebook uses cookies is to capture click IDs. So if you come from an ad, okay, so let's do a little drawing here. Okay, so here's our Facebook ad and we go to a page right here. Well, we've added Facebook's pixel to the page. So this is pixel code, Beep. there it is. And then when we click on this ad, we have a click ID. So there's in the URL, there's the F B C L I D. Any big guesses of what that means? Facebook click ID. And so when the person lands on the page, the pixel code loads and it sets cookies. Okay. The two cookies that Facebook sets is the F B P F B. I should win an award for mouse writing F B C. Those are the two cookies that Facebook sets. F B P is a browser identifier. It's just a, basically a timestamp, kind of like a session, session ID, browser ID type thing that they use. And then the F B C is the actual click ID so that that click ID persists. Why do values need to persist? Values need to persist so that when you go on to other parts of the funnel, yada, 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 you're going down, you go through a checkout process, whatever. And then finally on the thank you page, when you fire a purchase event, so we got purchase here, where this is like cursive because I'm not lifting. Okay, so we fire the purchase event, this value needs to still be available so that we can send it back to Facebook with all of those juicy click details and therefore your ads will get attribution data because the click ID is associated to the ad and we need to send it back with the purchase event. So how do cookies work? Cookies persist information because they live in the browser and every page that loads lives in the browser as well. So that is just a storage mechanism. There's various storage mechanisms in a browser. There's cookies, there's local storage, and there's session storage, and there's others. Those are the three like main ones that marketers use. So cookies, local storage, session storage, they all persist data. They're all mechanisms of storage and they're used for various different things. Cookies are primarily used for tracking. Um, if for marketers, that is, I should not have said that, that is way too broad of a statement that they're primarily used for tracking. 
cookies are used for a lot of things. For example, when you log into a platform, how does it know if you're logged in and to show you logged in pages? For example, in our, in our membership site, if you log into Better Than Data, it's on WordPress, and you can just navigate to all the pages that are hidden to people that are not members. So how does the server know to authenticate you and continue to grant you access? That is done through cookies. So cookies can't go away because like any secure thing where you log in would also almost go away. Um, okay, so cookies live in the browser. They are a way to persist storage JavaScript can read and write cookies for the most part. There are some cases where they can't if it is a server only cookie, but having the JavaScript or whatever write values into the browser will persist them across the entire session. Now, some cookies can last longer than a session. Some cookies will only last for the duration of the, the session, right? So if I close the window down, the cookie would be deleted. Otherwise, cookies can have a lifespan. So that's another thing we'll talk about that is being limited in some cases. Sometimes the lifespan is two years. Sometimes the lifespan is one month. The JavaScript or whoever's setting the cookie can determine what that lifespan is. So I think for Facebook, when they set it, I can't remember, I think it might be three months. I'm not sure, I'd have to check again, but we can do that. So, okay, so let's go take a look at an example of some cookies. So let's come back to our page here. I'm gonna right click. We're gonna hit inspect. <clears throat> this is gonna open up a side window. What we're gonna do is find the tab that says application. So here it is right here. And then mine already jumped there, must know whatever we're doing. Um, but on the left here, you'll see storage mechanisms. So you'll see the ones I mentioned before. We got local storage, we got session storage, we got cookies. So cookies, if we scroll down here, we'll see a list of domains. Sometimes you have more than one domain here. What does that mean? It means that there's third-party cookies on your website. Okay. Um, or like uh, other windows on the web page, I should say. Okay. So if we go to storage, which we're in application, storage, cookies, and then we choose our website, and then we have a list here of a bunch of cookies. So this is actually how you can see all of the cookies on your website. You have the name of the cookie, the value that is set, and the domain it's set on. In addition, you have the path, the expiration date, the size, whether it's a server-only cookie or not, and other stuff over here. Okay, <clears throat> so let's see if we can find this example of Facebook cookies. So if we come back and we do a filter, we type in FB, we should be able to see cookies uh, related to FB, Facebook. So here we have the FBP cookie. I can tell that it's set on our domain here. And this one is set on ConvertBox. So that would be a different, you know, this technically in the context of better than data is a third party cookie. Okay, so we have our Facebook browser ID cookie with this type of value, it's got like a timestamp and a random ID, and then it is set on this domain. Okay, so why don't we see the FBC cookie? Well, in this case, it's because we haven't come from an ad, so you actually have to come from an ad. We can simulate that. Let's go question mark FBC LID equals one, two, three. And now when the Facebook JavaScript loads, it should read that click ID from the URL and set a FBC cookie for us, which it looks like it did. Here was our FBP cookie. And now that we have come from an ad, quote unquote, it has set a FBC cookie. And so that this value will then persist for the duration of, we can see, I zoomed in so that we could see better, but now things are so small. We wanna see when it expires. I probably should just zoom out one and that would tell us. <laughs> okay, so zoom out a little bit. We got 2023-08-02. So that is, we are currently in 05. So it's like three months, three months cookie. So I think I was right. So three months cookie expiration set there. Let's zoom back in, restore things to its natural order. And so there we have it. So what does that mean? That means all events that we send to Facebook from now on until August will have the FBC. So if we send like a purchase event, someone purchases, then it will be associated with this click ID, which is associated with an ad. So that's a lot on Facebook.
What about things like Google? Oh, so one point here, does Facebook use third-party cookies? The answer is no, it does not use third-party cookies. It is using first-party cookies. We can tell it's using first-party cookies because the domain here for that cookie is set to our domain. It's not set to Facebook's domain. Similar to this one where FBP is set on ConvertBox, this is a third-party cookie in the context of better than data. So cookies, primarily, you know, the main tracking cookies that we talk about and everyone's using right now, Facebook and Google and those, don't use third-party cookies at all. So if someone says third-party cookies are going away, like who cares? Not a big deal in the context of Facebook and Google Ads, Google Analytics. Google Ads is another question though. Um, okay, so let's look at the Google Analytics cookies. The Google Analytics cookies are the GA cookies. So if we type in GA, we'll begin to see cookies set by Google Analytics on our page. So we've got our GA cookie here. So this is commonly known as the client ID, or if you're getting into the BigQuery world, this is the user's, um, the user pseudo ID here. So the client ID or the user pseudo ID, other cookies that we have. Actually, I wonder if I put this down at the bottom, it would be easier to see. See some of these names and values. Okay, so other um, cookies that we have here, we have a, a GA underscore and then some value. What is this value? This is the value of your stream ID. Is it the stream ID or the property ID? We can double check that. Let's go to analytics. And if we go under admin, we go to, first of all, let's go property settings. So 3359, that's not what it looked like. It's not 3359. So this is the stream ID. So if we come back to data streams and we click on thing here, we got 9DJ5T, blah, 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 9DJ5. Okay, so this is your uh, stream ID. So this is unique to Google Analytics 4. So if this one is the client ID or the user pseudo ID, then this one is contains the session ID. So GA4 has a uh, different concept of sessions. So we got the client ID, we got the session ID, and that's those pieces. So both of those are set on better than data. So those are first party context. What about these other ones? We got GA on Vimeo. That is third party context. This would be a third party cookie in the context of better than data. So why are these loading on the website? Well, probably because the we have different JavaScripts from these web pages, like these different domains, Vimeo, ConvertBox, YouTube, on our site, and they're trying to set third-party cookies. So I'm in Chrome. Every browser treats cookies a little bit different. One really great resource is Cookie, uh, it's called Cookie Status, and then it is maintained by Simo. So here you can understand a lot of the nuances and limitations around cookies for each one of the top main browsers. Um, Seam has also done a really great YouTube video on um, like WebKit and privacy around cookies. So if you're more interested in diving deep into those, then definitely check that out. However, I wanted to introduce this concept of uh, cookies and they're not going away, they're still used. Here's how to how to look at them um, and use them. In fact, if we wanted to make these available, so like, let's say I wanna use this, let's see, do we have any fun cookies we can, we can use? Let's just uh, check some of these out. Here's a clarity ID, right? And this is in third party context, so that's kind of interesting. You can kind of see which tools are setting first party cookies and which tools are setting um, third cookies in third party context. So uh, let's take this this guy right here. So CH UTM content. This is a cookie that stores the first UTM content. In fact, I think we have, let's go CH UTM source. Okay, yeah. So we can use all of these. Let's go CH UTM source. What if I wanna use this inside of Tag Manager? Quick side lesson here. What we can do is go to Google Tag Manager. We're gonna go to variables. And then what we're gonna do is we're creating a new user defined variable here that is going to read cookies. And it can only, now keep in mind, this can only read first party cookies. So if we choose under page variables, first party cookie, we then input the cookie name. So in our case, it was underscore ch, underscore utm, 
and source, I think it was. So we can go double check that. CH UTM scores, in fact, I could just copy this, come back and paste it in. And now in preview mode, I already have this, so you can actually see it right over here. So in preview mode, you would be able to go under, you know, an event, go to variables, find your first party cookie variable that we just made, and that value would reference the value stored inside of the cookie. So here it's YouTube, we can see the value right there, and here it is YouTube as well. Okay, so first party cookies, not going anywhere, totally used, now limitations. WebKit, which is what Safari uses, or Apple devices, so let's say you're using Chrome on an iPhone. Is that a WebKit browser? Yes, it is. Even though it's not Safari, because it's on your iPhone, it uses WebKit as WebKit's technology. So it's gonna be subject to all of the changes that WebKit has. So for example, uh, here, you can see what is happening with cookies in first party context. So now we've discussed first party versus third party context. Um, so JavaScript will, be, will JavaScript set cookies. So when you place the Facebook code on your website, that JavaScript is gonna set the FPP and FPC cookies. It will be deleted after seven days without user interaction on the website. So we won't go into like all the details here. However, one other limitation that is fairly new is that for cookies set with document cookies, so JavaScript cookies, expiration set to 24 hours on pages with URL decoration. What that means is when we visit the website with this FBC LID, this is URL decoration. This is a query string parameter getting added from Facebook's platform when you click on an ad to the landing page here. So what's gonna happen with those? They're gonna be set to an expiration of 24 hours. What that means is this expiration for the FBC parameter, this expiration that is now set in August because I'm on Chrome on my desktop, will be limited to 24 hours. Meaning if someone doesn't convert on my website within 24 hours, that FBC cookie will no longer persist. It will no longer exist in the browser. So if there is more than a 24 hour gap between me visiting the website and me making a purchase, then this FBC property will stop right at that 24 mark. So when I purchase, it will no longer have the FBC cookie available to it to send back. So that is one limitation that is happening on new Safari devices. So if, if you're on Safari, or if you are if you update your Apple iPhone to, I think it's the, hmm, I'd have to see what the latest version is. Um, but that is the current status of those. So link URL decoration will limit the thing. Uh, a lot of people have been trying to come up with different ways to get around this and mitigate this. And one thing to know for sure is that it's a cat and mouse game. Anytime a marketer or a you know technical marketer comes up with a solution, it's only a matter of time before they block that. And then you have to come up with another workaround and then they block that. So you're always gonna be playing this cat and mouse game. Um, I'm sure Facebook will come out with another method of doing it besides decorating URLs like this. And I think we've already seen some of that in some cases. So they're, you know, they're kind of on top of it, but know that that is one limitation. So are first party cookies going away? No. Are there some limitations happening? Yes. So I hope this gives you a nice intro to that. Let us know if you want to go deeper into certain topics, if you like this type of rant video and uh, otherwise we'll see you in the next one.